Right, in this video, we're going to look at the lower bound algorithm. Now, we've gone through this step by step. We've introduced the traveling salesperson problem in general. Then we made the graph complete. Then we found an example of a Hamiltonian cycle just by inspection, okay, just by looking at the graph or the matrix. Then we use the nearest neighbor algorithm to give us an upper bound. So currently we have an upper bound of 29. Our job now is to find a lower bound. So I'm going to go through the lower bound algorithm, which may seem a little peculiar. Now the lower bound algorithm, what it does is it first deletes one of the vertices. So you will be told which vertex to delete. And what that does is it deletes all of the edges uh, coming out of that vertex as well. So let's say we delete A. So A is now deleted. What we then have to do is we then find a minimum spanning tree on what is left. Now we have two algorithms that find us a minimum spanning tree. If you remember, one was Prim's and one is Kruskal's. Now the easiest to do in this case, because we have a matrix, is Prim's. So we are going to do Prim's on what is left. So in doing Prim's, let's get blue, I think. We're going to go with Prim's on what is left. It doesn't matter where you start, remember. So I'm going to say I'm going to start at B, and then I'm going to select B, C, so 5, so that would be the first to select. So Prim's on what is left selects five, uh, B, C first. We delete that first row, sorry. Then we delete the rest of the row. Then we're looking down both columns B and C. So that will next select CD, so that's CD for 7. Delete the rest of the row. Now I'm looking down B, C and D. And that selects 8. OK, so that connects E lastly. So D, E for 8. So that is the minimum spanning tree once A is deleted. Then, once that's been found, we then add in the two shortest edges coming out of A. So connecting A back to that minimum spanning tree. So the two shortest edges, so this is the minimum spanning tree, without A. These are going to be the two shortest edges from A that we have. So they would be uh, A, B, and A, C, three and four. Now, in some cases, you would be allowed to repeat uh, A, B. Okay? Um, so do two edges coming back uh, from A to B. So it would be like uh, that back and forth, for example. Okay, but uh, these are the ones that we're going to consider in this case. So it's the two shortest edges coming out of A, which is AB for 3 and AC for 4. So that the minimum is all of these edges added together. So we've got 5, 12, 20, 23, 27. So 27 is our lower bound. So what we can say now is that the optimum solution, the best solution that can be found, is going to be greater than or equal to 27, or less than or equal to 29. So it is somewhere between these two values. The 29 may be improved upon, but we'll certainly never get anything less than 27. And 27 may or may not actually exist. I mean, if you go back to the original network and you think, well, we had BC, that was connected, and we had CD, 
and we had DE. So that's the minimum spanning tree that we got. And then we added in A to B and then A to C just by looking at this as our root. Um, this is not giving us a tor because we could go A, B, C, D, E, but then we need to travel just along A, C, and I'm, I'm E. I'd need to go back over E, D, and D, C to get me back, and then along C, A. Okay, so this lower bound algorithm hasn't, in this case, given us an actual tor. It's given us a number which we will never find uh, a tor that is shorter than 27, but there may not be an actual tor that actually exists in this case. Okay, so this this is the situation. This is given by my lower bound algorithm. That by nearest neighbour.